Okay, so the transmission is out. The dog's making shadows. Uh, I pulled the flex plate, all that stuff off. You just buzz out these six bolts with an impact wrench. Otherwise, if you don't have an impact wrench, you're gonna have to have someone hold the engine from cranking over so that you can actually get these bolts out. Otherwise, the engine will just spin. Now, I put in a pilot bearing right there. You can see it inside the back of the engine. If you have an automatic, it's not going to have a pilot bearing. I had a real hard time with this one finding the right size and it didn't end up working. I ended up having to shave the outside race of the bearing and the uh, inside diameter of the back of the engine. So I won't bother giving you the part numbers. Now I'm gonna remove the throttle cable and then a couple wires, just get them out of the way because they won't be needed for the manual. But after that, you're gonna have to start, well, let me show you, there's already a cutout here, it looks like, for the manual transmission, for the shifter to go through. It's in the right spot, and it's right beneath um, where your automatic is. So, you're gonna have to start messing with the inside now. And I've already gone ahead and done some of that. So you can see the center console is taken out. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how to remove that. It's pretty straightforward, Phillips head screws or like 10 millimeters. Take all that off and then just start disconnecting everything from the inside. You're gonna be removing the throttle linkages that are attached over here and you're gonna take this entire piece, it bolts on with 7 16 or one half I believe, are the bolt size, but you're gonna wanna take them all out and remove the entire automatic shifter. And then once you get in there, I'm assuming it's gonna be some self-tapping screws that we were looking at to remove the entire cover plate. And then we'll just leave the four-wheel drive alone. So let me try to see if I can get that hole opened up right now without cutting anything. We're back underneath. I removed the automatic shifter. Now this hole starts at about 16 inches from the bell housing and it goes to 21 inches on the opening. I think that's gonna be just enough for my shifter to pop through. I don't think I'm gonna to need to remove this additional plate here, but if I need that extra inch of room, I can remove it. These are just self tappers that are held in, but uh, they're kind of underneath the carpet, so I don't wanna to get to them if I don't have to. All right, I'll let you know if I have to. All right, the flywheel is on. Now, it does have to go on in a certain orientation. Someone had already drawn a line when I had the flex plate on, so I just matched that line and then matched up the holes over on the bench. So if you don't get your flywheel aligned with all six bolts the first time, just keep rotating it one by one, and eventually they will all line up. Run them down with the impact. Um, make sure that everything still moves freely after you do it. It's a good idea. Now, next we're going to set up the clutch and the pressure plate. And there's a little alignment tool that you need that'll help you set it up. So I'll show you how that works. Okay, now's a good time before you assemble everything. You're gonna wanna clean off your flywheel and then your pressure plate. These friction uh, surfaces, you don't want them covered with dirt and oil and debris. So grab yourself a rag and a can of brake clean and go to town. Try not to hit your pilot bearing if you can. Um, it's not the end of the world. You can re-grease the thing. I have, this is a used flywheel, so there's a ton of debris on the outside, right outside the wear area. So I'm just gonna spray the rag and then I'll use the rag to specifically wipe where I want to clean off instead of spraying all over and having all that old stuff run down. Good enough for me. Okay, so to set up your clutch, you need one of these little alignment tools. It makes uh, your life a lot easier. Make sure it's clean, free of debris, grease is fine. And um, it's got splines, and then the tip here is the exact same size as the shaft of your transmission and the inside diameter of your pilot bearing. So what you're gonna do is before you've got everything on here, you're just gonna place it inside the pilot bearing, press it in all the way, and then let it hang out there. And everything else you'll just slide on over top of it. So the first thing you're gonna put down is the clutch. 
Now the clutch, it is uh, side specific. So usually it says it right on the clutch. It'll say flywheel side on one of these areas. Uh, with this particular clutch, you can see like there's a raised side and then a flat side. The flat side is the flywheel side. The raised side goes towards my pressure plate. So I will take this guy and we'll just slide it. Oh, bummer. Okay, I gotta remove the alignment tool and then the little handle, it won't fit through. But my pressure plate will, so. Let's go ahead and feed the splines through your clutch so it's just hanging out here. And then you can go ahead and put it back into your pilot bearing. And that will line up your clutch perfectly on the flywheel. And then next up, grab yourself your pressure plate and a couple of your bolts just to get started. Now this is probably going to be orientation specific as well. So, let's, let's try this, this looks all right. So go ahead and get a couple of these bolts started by hand and then you can run them down with the impact later. Uh, but you don't really need the alignment tool for your pressure plate. The, oh, the bolts that bolt it on will line it up with the clutch and the flywheel. So that one you can't really mess up. But that's it. So now I'll feed the rest of the bolts through tighten everything down with the impact again, and then I can pull out my alignment tool when I'm ready to position the transmission and bolt it up. So that's how you do a clutch. Okay, we got another pro tip here. So you remove the shifter so that you can get it underneath the car. Most of the times the shifter, cause it's got a bend in it, it will not line up with the hole in the bottom of your car until you get the thing mated and totally bolted up. So you've got to remove it for the most part. Sometimes you could leave it on, but when you take it off, build yourself a little cardboard gasket like this, and then just reattach the bolts. That way all the crud, this from above, is not gonna get knocked down into the transmission. All right, now we wheel it over and we are ready to stab it in. Now I do have the internal slave sitting on the front of the transmission, and this is the way that it was in the junkyard. This bearing still seems fine. That still seems operational. I didn't touch it, so we're gonna leave it there. But make sure that's installed before you stab in the transmission if you have an internal slave. Okay, a lot of the bell housing bolts are hooked up now. Crankshaft position sensor is in. I want to start trying to line up the uh, transmission mount because I can tell already the crossbar, well, there's the mount. The AW4s is about here, so it's longer maybe. Now, if you look on the underside of the frame, let me get a, another light real quick. So if we look here, those two dark spots, that's the mount position for the AW4. But if you look at the holes next to it, they are already, there's already holes there. I think I just have to tap them. I don't see threads there. But I'm gonna bolt the cross member up to the bottom side of, of this uh, transmission mount and then I'll see where these holes line up. I think it's going to be the one right there and then the one right there. And I think all I'm gonna have to do is run a tap through there and give myself some threads. Cause there's like a bushing that goes up in there. It's, it's already there, there's just no threads on it. So let me see what that looks like and then I'll get to threading and tapping so that I can bolt up the cross member so that I can really see where the top of my transmission mounts up and if it'll go through that tunnel. Right now it looks like it's going to. It just needs to get mounted up and the transmission is actually cocked a little bit to the driver's side because one of my motor mounts is uh, caved in. So I'll end up, I think it'll end up shifting the transmission a little bit 
to the passenger side and that'll basically line up perfectly with the hole that was already there for the automatic so I can put my shift arm through. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Okay, so we're over here. I've got the cross member on and it is going to line up. There's already holes there. You can see this is the slot towards the front and towards the rear. It's gonna line up with that one and that one. Now, it is moved forward quite a bit and these holes, they've got metal in there, some sort of bushing or a backing, but they're not threaded. So I need to tap those right now and then I can bolt this transmission up and it will line up perfectly with the hole for my shifter to go through. So I'll get on that now. All right, so we're just threading these holes here and I've cleaned out the hole. Uh, you don't need to drill it, it's already drilled to the right size. I just have a M10 by 1.5 for the threads and that's really it. I sprayed some WD-40 or uh, some sort of oil up in there, cutting oil or um, penetrating fluid. And then just make sure your tap goes in as straight as you can possibly get it. And just start twisting righty tighty. And um, these I haven't needed to back it at all, but Sometimes if it gets clogged up, just go lefty-loosey for a half a turn or so, and then go back to going righty-tighty. It'll just clean out the threads. It'll fall down into the holes, the slots in the side of your tab, or your die, whatever it's called. This was really simple to do. I have never uh, threaded anything before. Through real easily. Let's back them out. Beautiful. So you can kill that, move it back on, then we'll put our. Yeah, just double check that to make sure I didn't miss any bell housing bolts. But I think everything is tight from what I recall. Alright, we're back in the Jeep. I have the cross member all mounted up. Now, when you mount the cross member, that's a good time to put your four wheel drive linkage back in before you put the transfer case on. Break it apart so it's easier, but you don't gotta fiddle with as much stuff if the transfer case isn't in your way. Now I'm gonna put in the uh, shift fork here. You can see the top of the Peugeot lines up perfectly with um, this, this opening for the automatic. So we're just gonna slap in our shifter and make a custom boot or you could use the stock boot, it would work just fine. I just don't have one of those right now. Okay, we are ready to put in the pedal and the clutch master and slave. So right now we're in the engine bay, we're getting ready to drill out our holes for the master. I made a cardboard template. If you've seen the channel before, you know what I'm talking about and you know how to make these. Real simple, lets you transfer stuff pretty easily. But if you come back over here and look at the firewall, you can tell that from the factory, that was already dimpled out. So those dots that I drew there, the circle was not there. That I had to draw on my own with my template, but there's dimples right in the middle. So you can line up your hole saw right on that middle dimple and then the ones up in the top and the bottom, that's where your holes are gonna get drilled to mount the actual master. And uh, this whole master line over here on the Jeep, I got this from the junkyard, and I'll just feed this line behind the uh, brake booster and then down and it'll bolt right into the slave down by the bell housing. And this will go inside the firewall and mount up to my clutch pedal. So that part's gonna be miserable. That's why I'm out here drilling this out because it's a pain to get... Now it's a pain to get in there and do it, what you'll see, a little pro tip, just take the seat out. It's gonna make it a lot easier if you're dealing with this stuff because everything that you've gotta remove, it's gonna be way up underneath there and it, you might even need to remove this unless you wanna break your wrist or like bend them around in weird angles. You can do it without removing it, but you're gonna spend a lot of time up in there and it's so much easier if you can just get in the Jeep and lay in it or sit in it and not have to worry about the seat being in your way. So I'm gonna drill these holes out and then I will get around to removing 
the entire pedal assembly. Now I'm gonna take out the entire, for this automatic, it's just a brake booster. You gotta remove that entire piece, the brake booster, it's a couple bolts, and then you can slip in the new pedal assembly that has the clutch attached and there's room for it underneath. Um, it's, it's easier than just trying to finagle it and put the clutch pedal into the existing automatic pedal assembly. It's a lot easier just to grab the entire assembly from the junkyard and swap out the manual assembly into your automatic Jeep. So these are the two pedals. There's a couple things going on here. This pedal assembly is out of a 1991 from the junkyard. This is out of the Jeep right here that we're swapping into. So the main difference is, is your electrical, they're completely different. But now that I look at it more and more, it's got everything set up and they machine stuff from the factory to be the exact same automatic or manual as much as they can just to save cost. So you can see the entire backing bracket is the same. This one just has an empty space and a shorter bolt. So with this guy, all I'm gonna do is take this bolt out and I should be able to slide this entire long bolt out, take out my clutch pedal and then swap it over to here, take this short bolt out, get rid of that and then swap over this onto this. Basically put the clutch pedal into this bracket and that should bolt right up. And then I can use my existing bracket with all of my brake lights and everything to make it work. Now the other piece is on the side, which is for, for your slave. You can see it's already been pre-drilled out to accept it. I just have to take this bolt off and then take this bracket that goes to my master and bolt it right over here. It's one bolt. So instead of swapping in this entire pedal assembly for this one, which that would work too, they are the same. I just, at that point, I wouldn't have brake lights anymore. Um, and that's about it. Which, not the end of the world, but for this, I might as well just Take this apart, swap it over, so that way I've got my existing brake lights that still work, and then I have now a clutch pedal. So I'll do that now, and then we'll throw everything back in the truck, and we can hook up our master and slave assembly and bleed it. As expected, ow, the pedal assembly was much more of a nightmare than I <laughs> had wished, but that's the way it goes. I had to grind off a tiny bit. But otherwise, I did get to keep all of my electrical. I got everything bolted and mounted up underneath there. If we go to the engine bay side, we got the slave hanging out, looking nice and pretty right there. That's the clutch line behind the brake booster, and it goes right down. I'm gonna connect it to the slave right now and begin trying to bleed this thing. Okay, the master is bled and the slave is bled down below. We did the whole process, pump, 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 hold, brake, close, that kind of thing. No more air bubbles. I can make a video on that if you guys want, but for now, we're ready to see if this transmission is going to shift. So I haven't hooked up that much to this transmission, as you've probably noticed. I'm getting ready over here to jump the neutral safety switch which you're gonna have to do. This is another kind of one-off step. If you're swapping from an automatic to a manual, you're gonna have to swap out. You're gonna have to jump the neutral safety switch to make your truck start. But I haven't hooked up a lot of this stuff. I do not have the exhaust hooked up. I don't have the transfer case hooked up. I don't have Ah, four wheel drive. I don't have a lot of stuff hooked up underneath here. I'm gonna slide under here to show you. Basically, that's the back of the transmission. I got the cross member. All I wanna do is have a buddy sit underneath here on the ground and look at the output shaft of the transmission. And I want it to do nothing in neutral. And then I want to have the engine fired up and running and be able to put the clutch in and get into all of the gears. One, two, three, four, five, reverse, without any grinding, any issues. And when I do and let the clutch out, I wanna see this output shaft start to spin in a certain direction. 
So I wanna do all of this testing on this transmission before I hook everything else back up because I did pull this out of a junkyard and um, they don't test them. There's, there's no way to know if it does or doesn't work. It's all up to uh, the buyer to find out. So that's what I'm gonna do right now and I'll try to get some clips showing you of it spinning. All right, so we are at the, uh, this is the connector side for the transmission. To jump the neutral safety switch, you wanna make sure you have the male side, the connector up top right here. Make sure that's facing up and you want the bottom row and you want the middle two pins. That's what you wanna jump. It's the B and C connector of this electrical connection. There's another one that's gray in the same area. Do not jump this one. That's, that's not the right, it's not the right one. So you're gonna jump the B and the C. They're the middle of the bottom row. There's four on the bottom row and there's only three on the top. Not every pin is filled out on the top. So you wanna jump the middle, the B and the C terminal like that. I'm gonna do it right now just with the alligator clips to make sure that I can start the engine so that I can test the transmission that I got from the junkyard. After I verify that the transmission is good and moves forward and shifts into all the gears, then what I'll do is either cut the plug off that goes into this guy a couple feet down the line and jump those things with a solder, or I will solder a little wire that does just basically a U up here at the connector and then wrap it in electrical tape. I'll let you know what I do once I end up doing it, but those are the two pins on the uh, passenger side of the 4.0 that you have to jump to bypass the neutral safety switch. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do before I put the transfer case on is I'm gonna go ahead and change out the gear oil in this Peugeot transmission while I've got easy access to it. I think I'd still be able to get to this drain plug with the transfer case bolted up, but it's a lot easier for me to do it now. The fill is on the passenger side and it's the same thing. So if you take a look here, it looks like a 3 8 drive, it's not. You're gonna take a 3 8 drive extension socket something like that and grind it down with an angle grinder or some sandpaper until you get the right size. It's just a small square. It's bigger than a fourth, smaller than a three eighths. I don't know who would have this tool, but I've already broke both of these things loose. So I'm just gonna pull it now, drain the fluid. And then let me show you the fluid that I'm putting in. I got this tip off the internet. I was gonna change the fluid on this thing anyways because I couldn't feel it from the actual fill hole. So I know it's lower. But this is what the internet says to use for these Peugeot transmissions and apparently it works really well. You're going to want to get two quarts of Valvoline VR1 20 weight 50. It looks just like this. And then you're going to use about a half a quart of Lucas oil, heavy duty oil stabilizer. Um, so I'm going to use the two quarts of the Valvoline and then I'm just going to fill the rest up with this heavy duty oil stabilizer. So that's the combo that apparently works pretty good for these transmissions. So I'll do that now before I put on the transfer case. Okay, so here's what I made to jump the neutral safety switch. This is just the wiring connection that goes down to the neutral safety switch. So all these wires used to run to the transmission, the neutral safety, and then this plugs into the harness that comes off, well, that's in your engine bay on the passenger side. So all I did is if you're looking at it, the top, this little, uh, connector, electrical connector. It's the bottom middle two, that's terminal B and C. And if you look on the side, you can actually see it. It's B and C right there. Um, and all I did was take the two wires, cut them, and then splice them together with some heat shrink. So this should jump my terminals now. I don't have to worry about doing it with a paper clip or anything else and it's pretty nice, neat and tidy. So I can just plug this back in, in my engine bay and that'll jump the neutral safety switch. 
Then over here, we are pumping in the fluid. So there's the fluid transfer pump. That's the 50 or 20 weight 50 the VR1. And that's going into the transmission. So we'll pump it full right now. All right, so the swap is done. I've hooked up the drive shafts, filled everything, topped it all off with fluids. We've taken this on a trip now. It's quite a few days later, but everything ran really smooth. I don't think there were any other hiccups. I think I pretty much covered everything in all of the footage. So, I mean, basically it's all wrapped up in here. Five speed is on, the pedals are all together. I don't have the shift boot on right here, but otherwise, four wheel drive, I did have to um, make a, like a, basically a drop down bracket for the uh, wishbone linkage since this thing does have a lift kit on it and it does have a transfer case drop down bracket. The other thing since the um, Peugeot five speed that's in here is shorter than I believe the AX15 and the AW4. I had to cut like an inch out of the four wheel drive linkage and shorten it and then just re-weld it back together. So otherwise it was too long. Basically it wasn't allowing it to go through all of its uh, gear selections. All right, I think that's a wrap.